Thank you so much for having me, GSBA. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. For those that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Lorena Gonzalez. I am currently a council member. I was first elected in 2015 as the first Latinx person ever elected citywide uh, to a city um, elected position. And I am now seeking an opportunity to represent the people of this great city as its next mayor. Um, It would be my honor to be the first Latinx person elected to be the mayor of this city. I am, uh, in addition to being a council member, I am a former civil rights attorney. I used to represent um, people from all backgrounds, races, and Uh, sexual orientation in all manners of employment discrimination cases right here in the city and across the country. I am uh, proud to bring that civil rights experience to bear as we look now at struggling with how we deliver public safety in a manner that really respects and honors the civil rights and liberties of our community members, especially our black residents, and neighbors and workers in our city. So I'm excited to put my nearly 16 years of civil rights experience to work as mayor to make sure that we are transforming our public safety model. And of course, uh, I am excited to have an opportunity to transition from the council to the mayor's office to work on the crisis of homelessness. Uh, you know, the, 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 the role that I play now is largely related to budget appropriation, and um, I want to be the kind of mayor that is going to be ready to take action and to implement the things that we know work to make a meaningful transformational change. And then lastly, uh, economic relief, making sure it's equitable, making sure we're focusing on our neighborhood business districts and preserving and supporting and enhancing the opportunities of our small business owners uh, who are BIPOC and LGBTQ to continue to have a place in our city is of such critical importance. We have a once in a generation opportunity to do that. And I uh, am looking forward to doing that in partnership with GSBA and your members and others across the city. Thank you and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, thanks for having me. In your first 100 days of mayor, what are you gonna take immediate action on? What's the first thing we can expect from you whenever you take on that role? You know, I think um, in the tradition of so many other mayors, we've got to we got to make sure that the administration reaffirms our commitment, our strong commitment to racial equity and social justice in our city. Uh, Almost every mayor has uh, historically issued an executive order to say these are the these are the values by which the administration is going to be led. Secondly, we're going to get to work right away on addressing the issues related to people experiencing homelessness. Um, And that means making sure that we are on day one laser focused by um, uh, getting our new deputy mayor who's going to be focused squarely on homelessness uh, to work on day one on making sure that we are effectively transitioning our homeless, uh, our human services department over to the new regional authority in uh, making sure that we are standing up and enhancing an emergency crisis system and on uh, rolling up our sleeves to just implement the millions of dollars that have been invested in long-term solutions, as well as those rapid rehousing solutions. That has got to be um, top, top priority um, for, um, for the next mayor. And I'm looking forward to being able to have an opportunity to do that. Good, thank you. Um, you know, street level businesses are a particular community that, that we work with in the GSBA. Mm-hmm. Um, they face so many competing pressures recently. There's so many things impacting their world. How can you support them and what can you do for those businesses? Yeah, you know, I think um, street level businesses, uh, especially within our neighborhood business districts, are so, so critical to the vibrancy and to the character of our neighborhoods. When I first moved to Seattle, I actually Uh, moved to the Capitol Hill neighborhood just down the street from the then uh, Harvard um, exit. And, and, uh, you know, making sure that we are, again, focused on on a few things to to make it easier and more supportive to do business in the city of Seattle for our small businesses is going to be important. One is we know that there are a lot of layers of bureaucracy um, at the city that make it really challenging for street level businesses to do things like Put up a sign, or um, or modify their 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 window, whether it's retail or restaurant, right? And so there's an opportunity for us to to really streamline those processes. And as mayor, I will be in a in a position to be able to to do that to direct 
our um, our departments who are responsible for those particular um, components to streamline those processes and make it easier. We've started doing that already. I was really proud, for example, to support um, to be the 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 co sponsor of recent legislation that is going to make our cafe um, sidewalk cafes permanent um, and to to sort of de take take the bureaucracy out of the permitting process was really important. But, you know, I continue to hear that concern from a lot of street level businesses. Second, um, you know, harken back to my opening statement here. Homelessness, I know, has an impact on both public health and public safety concerns for street level businesses. And we have a responsibility both to our housed neighbors and our unhoused neighbors to to give to rapidly rehouse individuals who are currently currently using businesses stoops and awnings as their as their shelter. Um, it is, you know, the number of times I talk to small business owners, many of whom are my personal friends, about how hard it is for them to show up and, and ask somebody to move along, both for, for their business sake, but also for the person who is um, experiencing homelessness. We can do we can do better. We know where these individuals are experiencing homelessness, and what we need to do is not just community outreach at a neighborhood level. We also need to make sure that we have a place to um, to a safer place to refer um, folks to immediately, and that has got to be the number one focus um, to again address those public safety, public health concerns. And then, lastly, I know a lot of our small businesses continue to face financial difficulty, and as we continue to receive federal dollars over the next five years from the federal government, it's, it's going to be important to um, have a mayor who understands the needs of retail, restaurant, and other businesses in our um, community who are going to continue on a path of recovery. And that means making sure that we have um, uh, direct cash assistance and support for those businesses who are going to take a little longer to recover in um, you know, our arts and culture community in, and in our retail restaurant um, industry as well. Thank you. Um, I noticed from your campaign platform, you were interested in reinvigorating the Office of Economic Development, and that that's a, something you felt was a real important priority. Can you tell me more about why you think that's important and what you hope to accomplish? Yeah, you know, I, um, I've had an opportunity to meet with, um, with uh, members of the Mayor's Small Business Advisory uh, Council, and one of the things that, that, that was really lifted up to me um, in that conversation was really about how, you know, the things that, that small business owners need um, uh, from an Office of Economic Development are things like technical assistance. And these are things that we we played with and really scaled up in the COVID crisis that people want to see stick around because it's been a need for a really long time. So, you know, not everybody has access to HR. Not everybody has access to payroll systems. Not everybody has access to what a business plan actually looks like. These are the these are sort of the, the, the backbone, the foundations of businesses that help to create stability and, and, and long-term planning for small business owners who are just carrying a lot um, on top of sort of the operationals and manage, operational management um, component. You know, the other thing that we hear a lot of folks say is the need for commercial affordability and how we can partner together through our Office of Economic Development to create sort of more innovative hubs for places to innovate and have these micro enterprises really um, come to fruition. Um, you know, one of the ways that we innovated last year that I was one of the prime sponsors on was uh, allowing these garage businesses to legally operate in our neighborhood districts. Um, Yonder Cider is the most popular, um, uh, you know, most well-known example of uh, why our codes were were not matching up with what I think people in the city really want to see. And we can do more of, of that to continue to promote, um, you know, that, that entrepreneurship and the ability to actually um, access commercial space first in your home and then eventually brick and mortar, I think is something that is going to be critically important to continue to invest in the vibrancy of our neighborhood districts. Got it. Thank you. Another factor, another issue that's affected communities around Seattle is that people of color have been experiencing being displaced from communities as property values rise and more people move into the city, particularly Capitol and the, and the Central District. Um, for those neighbors, neighborhoods, how do we stabilize them? How do we make sure more people of color can stay in their homes and that keep those communities, you know, well, safe and welcoming for the people that currently live in them? Yeah, you know, gentrification and anti-displacement is one of the most significant pressing issues um, in addition to, to, 
to public safety and policing for many BIPOC community members. And I think one of the things that is important is, is, is to create, um, create opportunities specifically through our next housing levy renewal proposal to own land and to have uh, alternative housing models that aren't currently supported through um, public subsidy. So I'm talking about, you know, land trust and um, co-ownership of, of, um, of buildings like co-ops, for example. These are things that I think these models of these different housing choices are absolutely critically important to making sure that folks in can come together as a community and really, um, you know, pool their resources, limited resources, and make many more, much more resources to actually, um, to actually be able to create housing choices and options that are affordable and accessible to, to them. But of course, we need to be able to subsidize those types of efforts. And we can do that through the housing levy, um, which is which is coming up next, which is going to be renewed in the next few years. The, the other thing that I would say is that our zoning laws in the city still carry with them the vestiges of redlining, which of course were rooted in um, extraordinary racist housing policies. And um, and I think that in order to relieve the market pressures that are currently absorbed by, abs absorbed by our urban villages, of which the Central District and um, Capitol Hill are a part of, uh, we need to open up the other portions of our residential land, which are currently strictly reserved for single family homes. Um, most of you know the average price of which right now in the city is eight hundred fifty thousand dollars a pop. We need to be able to open up those zones to multifamily housing to allow for um, for market pressure to be relieved, and we can do that and and pair it up with these anti displacement, anti gentrification strategies that I'm discussing. That I think will um, allow an opportunity for um, our BIPOC community members to to build wealth and to create community and space and stability within their um, historical communities. Thank you. Another question. How will your leadership impact the culture of the Seattle Police Department in your first term as mayor? You know, I, um, I'm, I'm a civil rights attorney. I used to, um, for 10 years, um, I, I built a practice on, um, on filing civil rights lawsuits against police departments across the state, including here in, in Seattle. And um, accountability and reform is number number one in um, in in terms of the top of one of the top of mind issues for me, and and on on this issue, you know, cultural reform is critically important. And I'll tell you, um, the the stakes are so high, and we know that the stakes are high because we just saw um, an, a clear example of the deep seated cultural reform that is needed by virtue of the OPA releasing their investigation on the six officers who attended the insurrection activities on January 6th. And, um, and it is of a deep and profound concern to me that only two of those six officers were held accountable um, by virtue of, of being recommended for termination. And, and so I think that, that um, the challenge for the next mayor will be to root out those extremist views and to partner with both an OPA director and a chief who is going to um, hold those uh, individuals accountable and who is going to change our hiring practices to better vet and, uh, and ensure that we are not hiring individuals into our police force that hold those extremist um, extremist views. So we we have we have got to be, you know, we've got to clean up our practices around hiring. We've got to make sure that once they are hired, they're that individuals are going to be held accountable for these extremist views. And um, and you know, I think in my opinion, holding these six officers accountable through termination right now is um, is this chief's opportunity to send a very very clear message that this kind of behavior uh, is, is unacceptable and will have, and that we have a zero tolerance policy and that there will be serious consequences for, um, for, the, for those extremist views. Thank you, thank you. And now my last question and my favorite question, the one I wanted to ask, Seattle is famous nationally, globally as a city of business and art and culture and for its natural beauty. Like how will you be a global mayor? 
A <laughs> global mayor. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think we're, I think, um, you know, Seattle went through a rough time last year. And I think a lot of people um, continue to want to be down on us as a city. And, and, um, and I, I am not down on our city. I think this is one of the most beautiful places to live. Um, we still experience thousands of people moving here um, a week. And there's a reason for that. It's because of our people. It's because of our place. Um, and it's because of the economic opportunities that are available um, in, in a city with such uh, great prosperity, even in, uh, in this economic recession. You know, we have fared better than many of our other, um, you know, similar situated cities across the country. And, and so I think, I think, um, I think we are, I would love to be a global mayor by, by, uh, sharing the, the joy and the love I have for this city by making sure that we have like the best schools, best parks, best transit system, and that we have, a, a real meaningful network of social housing, of affordable housing for for our artists and for um, for our small business owners and for their workers and for all of those individuals who are unfortunately currently um, sleeping and living outside in harsh harsh conditions. When we are able to deliver on all of that, we will continue to be able to talk about how proud we are um, to be Seattleites and um, and how people should um, continue to look at us as the national leaders on some of the biggest, boldest, most progressive um, uh, policy um, and transformational changes that we have been able to make together. So I'm excited about I'm excited about being able to continue to evangelize the greatness of our, of our beautiful city. Thank you.